We have been focusing our attention on pericyclic reactions, and we've looked at the Dills Alder reaction and the electrocyclic reactions. The third one that we're going to now discuss is called the sigma, sigma tropic rearrangement. And that is shown right here, in which we start with one molecule and we end with one molecule. <coughs> We start with two pi bonds, we end with two pi bonds. But what is happening overall is that we are just trading this sigma bond to form that sigma bond. We're just overall the same amount of sigmas, sigma bonds, same amount of pi bonds, it's just we're switching them around. Okay. Now the term Sigma tropic comes from the Greek word tropos, which means change. So we're just changing that sigma bond around. Now we have some notation that tells us what type of sigma tropic rearrangement that occurs. So this one right here at the top right corner is a 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement. And we need to be able to figure out how that uh, notation works. And that's what I'm going to show you on the whiteboard. So I'm going to draw the reaction again so we can watch it here. That's not it. All right. So if we add some heat, the reaction mechanism looks like this. To form our product, then it looks like that. So the bond, the sigma bond that is broken is that one. And the sigma bond that is formed is now that one. Now this is a 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement. So how do we go about this? The textbook shows how to do it this way. Okay. That doesn't make much sense in my mind. It's easier for me to do it this way that I'm going to show you now. So if you don't like the way I'm presenting this, then you can always go to the textbook and see it done a different way. Okay. So when I look at a sigma tropic rearrangement here, I I want to draw the transition state. So when I look at this right here, I'm going to use that as my guide to help me draw the transition state. So what I see here is that this bond right here is partially, partially breaking. So I'm going to draw the sigma bond, but the pi bond is partially breaking, so I'm going to draw a dotted line. Those pi electrons are now forming a bond with this carbon here. So that is going to be a dotted line because the bond is forming. So if I number these right here, so one, two, three, four, five, and six, we have carbon six and carbon one. Now carbon two, one and two has a sigma bond and the pi bond is breaking. So I draw dotted lines. Carbons two and three carbons two and three are forming a bond. So that's going to be a dotted line. Carbons three and four are breaking. So that's going to be a dotted line. And then carbon four and five already have a sigma bond, but are now going to form a double bond. So that right there is our transition state. And then I just take a line 
and draw it through the sigma bond that is breaking, which is this one, and the sigma bond that is forming. Right there. So I draw a line directly through those two. And now you see that I have halves. And then you simply count how many atoms are in each half that are in the transition state. So there's one, two, three carbons on that half, and then one, two, three carbons in that half. So the, the notation is a three comma three sigmatropic rearrangement. So that three can come from those three, and those three comes from that, those three. That's how we do it. Now here's another example of figuring out the sigmatropic rearrangement notation. And this one is a 1-5. And we will do work on this one together in class. Now there's a named reaction called the COPE rearrangement. Well, yeah, the COPE rearrangement. And it's a 3-3 sigmatropic reaction. And we see here by the mechanism what is occurring. And we add a little heat, and then we get this product right here. Now, why do you think this one is favored over the starting material? Why do you think that's the case? I would pause the video and reason through it before you hear the answer. Well, it comes down to looking at the types of double bonds. What we have here is a mono-substituted alkene and a mono-substituted alkene. But on the product, we have a mono-substituted alkene and a di-substituted alkene. And we have learned from previous chapters that more substituted alkene, more stable it is due to hyperconjugation. So that is why that is the favored product. We also have another uh, reaction called the Claisen rearrangement, which is also a 3-3 sigmatropic re rearrangement reaction. And it occurs between an allylic group and a vinylic group in this ether molecule. So you can take this ether molecule, and just rotate those bonds to make it look like this right here. Okay. And then the same reaction arrows here to give us our product on the right. Now I want you to compare this Claisen rearrangement right down here. So this is the Claisen. And compare it to the previous reaction that I showed you called the Cope rearrangement. Okay. So it's analogous to the COPE reaction. So if we trace, if we focus our attention right here, just watch me trace it. Okay. Now let now trace the COPE or the Claisen rearrangement. Do you see how it's analogous? The only difference here is that this carbon right there has been replaced with a oxygen. Okay. It looks very, it's analogous. That, that's the word to use, okay? But when you have an ether, we call it a clason. Okay. Now we see another interesting observation here that the product on the right here is that equilibrium favors that uh, molecule there. Why is that the case? Well, it has to do to the fact that a carbon-oxygen double bond is lower in energy than a carbon-carbon double bond. So it's just thermodynamically favored to rearrange to that uh, molecule right there. 
can also have a Claisen rearrangement with a allylic group and an aryl group. And what happens in this process, you can see right here. Okay? And what happens is that we are once again trading a carbon carbon double bond for a carbon oxygen double bond. But when that occurs, look at what has happened to the six membered ring. What has happened is that we have broken, or uh, what's the word? The aromaticity of the molecule has been destroyed. And we will discuss in future chapters what I mean by aromaticity. But this right here is aromatic. And this right here is not aromatic. But molecules, if they can become aromatic, it's a very stabilizing effect. And so what this molecule right here does is it does another uh, process called the tautomerization to restore aromaticity. So not aromatic. And this one is aromatic. And so that's another Claisen rearrangement reaction that you need to be aware of. Now this tautomerization mechanism has been discussed in Orgo 1 and in previous chapters. So I'd highly recommend that you go back and remind yourself about tautomerization.